Hi, I'm Virginia from Peaceful Acres Farm, and today we're going to be making and decorating our own face masks. First, let's go over our supplies for this project. We've got a piece of parchment paper, a plate and a paintbrush. A foam brush is what I'm using today. A piece of cardboard, a sewing needle, a circle of cotton fabric, and this is 100% unbleached cotton fabric. Some acrylic paint, some thread, a pair of scissors, and then I have some elastic for my masks, and I'm making two, so I'll need two pieces of elastic for each, so four pieces total. Um, so foam, craft foam, and yours might or might not have a sticky back on it. This is just regular craft foam, but they both work just fine. I have an iron-on vinyl transfer, and I have a piece of Publix grocery bag to act as a filter. It's a non-woven polypropylene fabric. So this mask comes from a circle of fabric and all I did was take a plate and put it down on a piece of fabric and trace around it and then cut out my circle. So for our first mask, the very first thing we're going to do is decorate it. And I'm actually going to make my own stamp to stamp the fabric. And I'm going to do that with the craft foam that we talked about. So I'm going to use a pen and draw a design on my craft foam. And then I'm going to cut it out with my scissors. And then I'm going to use my glue stick to glue my design to my piece of cardboard, paint it, and use it to stamp the fabric. Once your stamp is dry, we're going to paint it and stamp our own fabric. And this is just craft grade acrylic paint. Try not to get the paint on the cardboard. Uh, it's okay if you do, but it helps if you don't. So you just paint it and press it down and repeat. Once you've stamped your fabric and your design is dry to the touch, you can heat set the paint onto the fabric, making it where it won't wash off with a warm blow dryer, or you could use your uh, clothes dryer on a high heat setting, or you could go over it with an iron. Now to start making the mask, we're gonna fold the fabric in half, and we're gonna cut along this long side. Now you're going to put right sides of your fabric together, so you're going to put the stamped side together. And we're going to sew along this curve, but we're going to leave about a two inch open space so that we can flip the fabric in the, to the right side out when we're done sewing. 
You want to thread your needle. After you run your thread through your needle, you want to put a knot on the end so it doesn't come through the fabric. And you do this however you need to. <laughs> So you just barely pull the thread through just, let's see, I've got about a six inch tail. And we're gonna start over here on the edge and we're going to stitch across, leaving that two inch gap about three quarters of the way through. So now that we have the knot at the end of the fabric, we're gonna insert the needle into the fabric and pull it through. And you wanna be sure and hold this right here because if you just keep pulling, then the thread will come out of the needle. So you've got to be sure that you have a hold of that. And you want to pull it through until your knot catches. Okay, so now we're just going to start sewing. And you can do whatever stitch you're comfortable with if you uh, have sewn before. I'm just going to get started and do a really quick one to show you guys. So I'm just going up and down the fabric up from the bottom, down through the top. And I'm doing several at once. Now the closer you stitch, uh, you make your stitches, the tighter it's going to be when you try to flip your mask. So it might be best for a mask to make close stitches, but I'm just gonna do some big loose ones to speed it up a little bit. Okay, so now that I've gotten where I need to tie the string off, I'm going to make sure that I'm at the top of the fabric and I'm going to go back in next to this last little stitch that I made. And I am going to put my needle under this last stitch and pull it through a little bit and you'll have this loop of thread that you're pulling through and I'm just going to circle through it and then pull it tight and you don't have to knot your fabric your thread like this you do it however is easiest for you there's a million different ways to do it and I'm actually going to do that a couple more times Now you're going to put a knot in the end of your thread again. So now we're going to finish sewing this part, but we're going to leave a gap so that we can flip it right side out. So I'm going to start right about here. And this is also going to be the place where we slip in our filter. So you want to make sure that it's big enough for you to get your filter in. Just like that. And now I'm going to knot it right here, just like I did a minute ago. So now we are going to sew along this edge, but what you have to do first is flatten it the opposite way. So you're going to flatten it like this. And you can kind of see the shape beginning to take place. And we are now gonna sew along this line right here. And you're just gonna sew all the way across, just like we did a minute ago. Except without leaving the break to flip it, you're gonna sew all the way across. And there's the spot that we left open on the other side. So once you've sewn all the way across, we're gonna flip it right side out and we're gonna use that little hole that we left earlier. Uh, be really careful not to rip it when you flip it. <laughs> um, and it, like I said earlier, it is really helpful if you put your stitches closer together than this. I was just trying to speed it up for the sake of the camera. Now that little part that we left open, if you want to take some thread and finish this edge so that it's not sticking up, all you need to do is 
fold it a little bit and just stitch across here so that it is stitched flat like that because you are going to be putting your filter in this hole and so that will help strengthen it a little bit so it doesn't rip. Okay, now we're going to fold in these ends right here and just do a couple stitches right here to hold that right there. And that's where we're going to feed the elastic through to go around your ears. And you want to do that on both sides. So now that you've sewn the little edges, we're going to feed the elastic through. And if you have trouble getting your elastic to go through, you can use something to um, show it through like a pin or attack. All right. Once you get it through, you want to tie the ends together and tie them together however fits your head. So this is going to go over your ear. So just make sure that it's the appropriate length for your face. And you just want to do a little double knot, kind of like when you tie your shoe. And then the second knot goes the opposite way. And then you want to pull the knot so that it is hidden right there. And if you want to trim the ends, you can. And do that for both sides. Now you'll just want to insert your filter. And if you want to take the two points on the filter and put a little stitch right here and a little stitch right here, they will fit in your fil uh, the filter will fit in your mask better. Or you can just leave it like this and you want to put it in through that hole that you left open. For your second mask, the one that we didn't decorate, we're going to do the iron-on transfer that you got with your supply kit. It's a good day to read a book. So you want to preheat your iron on the wool setting and the piece of parchment paper that came with it. What you'll do is put the sticky side down onto your fabric, put the parchment paper on top of it, not on your hand, put it on an ironing board, and then you want to press down with medium pressure on top of the parchment paper for about 10 seconds. And then take off your parchment paper and try to slowly peel up the edge of the transfer paper, which is the clear paper, and see if your design sticks. And if it sticks, you can just slowly peel it off. Thank you guys so much for joining me and I hope you had a great time.